need to switch it on? Yes. Opa. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let us start from a, a very basic thing. Uh, I, I have sometimes wondered uh, about one mis misnomer. The smartphones uh, should be renamed, obviously, uh, uh, into dumb phones. That that's, seems to me obvious. Uh, do you have any idea why why smartphones are smart? Why they are called smart if they make us dumber? Because the uh, uh, original premise of this discussion uh, was naive. It was to discuss if technology is making us dumber. There is nothing to discuss. It's obvious that it's making us dumber. Well, I think it depends on, and just to get right out there at the beginning, it depends on where you draw the wrapper around yourself. Does, it, does your self end at your skin and your skull, or does it extend into your friends and your family and the objects around you, including your phone? And I think it does extend into the objects around you, including your... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Since you are so wide and expansive very wide could could you describe your uh, well yourself what Mine. is included in that uh, apart from your body what, so i've been writing about and this. the phone what else um your uh, the the people close to you who provide support for you in ways that you may not even know things that your brain doesn't do for you but which your brain provisions in the environment so that you can get by and i think a lot of times humans don't even think about this um, but if I can just keep going very quickly, the reason I'm thinking about this so much at the moment is because I'm writing a story about a boy called Ethan, who is one of 10 people in recorded history born with no cerebellum, which is the bit of the brain right at the back, uh, which basically controls your actions and behaviors and thoughts. And uh, he gets by, and he gets by by relying on the network of people and things around him. And when you see someone with a very severe difference between a typical person and them, these things come into, they, these things become highlighted. Uh, just one quick uh, uh, question. This large self which you described, including phones and family members and uh, what else, can that become dumber or smarter, the, the large self? I mean, I think you would have to get into semantics about dumber and smarter, but I would assume that it can, yes. Um, and lately, thanks to technology, this lar your large self is becoming smarter or dumber? I'm agnostic about that. I think my small self is definitely becoming dumber. I no longer remember phone numbers. I no longer am particularly good at finding my way from A to B without looking at my phone. I'm no longer even good at remembering what it is I'm supposed to be doing without having my phone with me. Um, but I think my larger self, personally, I think my larger self is smarter because I'm able to provision things. I'm able to send things into the future to come back and remind me later. Um, and I... I I think we have an interesting back and forth about this because I think that the current, uh, the current anti-tech feeling, while I, I, I almost feel like a tech criticism hipster, right? Because I now feel like, oh, everyone's criticizing Facebook now. I was doing that before it was cool. Um, but I do think it's going a little bit far. I think that technology, as a general rule, can help us. We just need to think about the ways to tie down the bad bits and let the good bits sort of fly free. Thank you. Could you pass a micro microphone to the lady? Uh, yesterday when we talked, uh, you said that the original premise is technology making us dumber is dumb because we are dumb uh, to start with. Uh, so there is uh, not much more dumber we can be uh, than, uh, well, uh, but uh, could you, being a specialist of artificial intelligence uh, and uh, teaching robots uh, emotion recognition and uh, what was the uh, Engagement, Engagement recognition, yeah. yeah. Uh, could you explicate uh, your idea that we are dumb to start uh, with? I, I wouldn't say today we are dumb, okay? Well, it was just yesterday's <laughs> I, I, thought? Yeah, <laughs> like after two glasses Or two, maybe two glasses over of the wine. night. We <laughs> <laughs> I, I, want, I want to ask you to define intelligence. What is intelligence for you? I don't want to define anything. I mean, uh, intelligence. It's a waste of my time and effort and the attention of the audience to define okay. things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what is intelligence. Intelligence, like. Okay, so intelligence can be uh, defined like there are several facets of intelligence, okay? One of them is being adaptable, 
Uh, second uh, thing is uh, problem solving. Uh, third th thing, thing is uh, social intelligence, like being able to uh, understand people and to adapt to, to and react to what other people tell us. And I want to ask you something. Is it by using the phone you are like getting uh, dumber, not dumber uh, in these things? I don't think so. Like, um, I would like to refer to when they, they created the calculator, okay? So, okay, we, we don't need anymore to use our mental, um, mental uh, strengths to, to, um, to calculate things and to, like, solve mental problems because the calculator has, is, is doing this for us. Okay, and it is the same thing now for other things, like for boring things. That it, it is true, like technology it is taking some of the tasks, and we will be dumber in these tasks in the mean, in the in the in the um, way that we don't need anymore to use our brains to to solve them. Okay, but it is creating for us time that will permit us to work on other things and to be more intelligent in other things. So imagine that uh, until now uh, you, we don't have the calculator and we need to do all the mental uh, mathematics in our brains. Maybe we, we wouldn't arrive at this point where we have AI and working on more intelligent stuff. So, so, so I d do you remember my question? N no. <laughs> I noticed. My question is, could you exp explicate kindly uh, your notions that we are dumb to start with. Yeah, but I changed my... my, my uh, Completely. Yeah, we are... We are not dumb. <laughs> no. Okay, uh, let us uh, include uh, Jonathan into this uh, story. Uh, since I, I assume your mind doesn't change so quickly overnight, you don't change your opinions uh, like to the I'm opposite. I'm a woman. <laughs> well, we have noticed, yes. Uh, but, uh, Jonathan... Uh, uh, what I'm was that? Kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Jonathan, um, uh, since Hall, 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 Hall um, uh, mentioned uh, that uh, his smaller self becomes dumber, but his larger self uh, becomes maybe smarter. I don't have a, a no clear uh, larger self, but um, what happens with your self uh, thanks to techn technology? I actually avoid technology as far as possible because I can feel it making me dumber. Um, if I eat an enormous fillet steak with three fried eggs on top, I can feel my heart slowing down with every bite. And when I'm on my smartphone, which I rarely do, I only use it for going online occasionally, most of the time I have a dumb phone, um, <clears throat> I can actually feel myself getting stupider. Uh, what I can f one of the things I can feel is I'm surrendering to my instincts much more. We've always been creatures of instinct, and one of the things that technology has done has it served our ability to indulge our instincts much more. It's one of the, one of the main uses that we've, had with, with, that we've put technology to. And the more, we, the more we're invited to indulge our instincts, the dumber we become. The story of humanity has always been a struggle between our higher intellect, our ability to step out of our instincts, uh, and our desire to follow our instincts. Doesn't that then mean that cars made us dumber and paper made us dumber? Like exactly. your, arg your argument suggests that every technological progression humans have ever made is, uh, is a, a long path towards instinctual stupidity. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying most, of, most, most technology does it because of the purpose that most technology is created for. Uh, now, one of the things that cars did is they, they made us less healthy. And in the same way, technology makes our brains, a lot of technology, makes our brains less healthy. It doesn't have to be that way. There is, there's, you, know, you, you can use technology to build a multi-gym and you can get healthier. You can use the technology to create brain training software and get smarter. Most of the time, we don't use technology for that. But instead of, instead of saying, instead of looking at new technologies and saying, this makes me dumb, therefore I will not use it, like, surely you don't deny that there are upsides to these things. Why not say, I want the upside of this, but not the downside. So for instance, with cars, if it means you have to do some exercise as well as driving to work instead of running after animals to kill them to stay fit, then probably that's a net good for everybody. You get to go wherever you want, you can drive to visit your mother far away, you can move around the planet quickly, and also you have to do some exercise. So I think what we're missing currently with the discussion about whether smartphones make us dumb is what's the exercise, what's the change, what's the, what's the balancing effect against this, I, in my personal opinion, powerful, useful technology What's going to balance it out? What's going to make? Because I, th I think we all agree that we sort of feel a bit stupid while we're lying on our beds scrolling through Instagram. But um, what's the what's the countervailing effect? I don't know. 
self-awareness and discipline, which are two things that technology doesn't really help us to develop. My, my problem uh, with uh, this is that smartphones seem to me uh, from the, it's a, the technology of the past. We are coming into the bright future where there should be just some chip which you put, uh, uh, I don't know, in your buttocks or in your, uh, on your forehead. And uh, just by thinking alone, you are connected to the whole world. You can communicate all your stupid thoughts to anyone, you know, immediately. And, and there will not be any filters, you just can, uh, and it will be fantastic. You can learn languages in, in, in an hour, you know, fantastic advancements are coming to our bright future. And what uh, will become of these uh, animals, who are we, after this bright future comes? So what will happen? Well, who are we after that? When machine takes over majority of our mental skills and and abilities? Uh, we will be more creative. We will? Yeah, we're more creative because we will be... Uh, does it work? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because we will be put, like giving the, the machines the, the boring stuff and this will keep room for us to create things. And I think that's what would happen. I don't think that uh, we will be like uh, dumber. And like, if we if we give something to someone else to do it at our place, like look at CEOs and like companies and bosses and everything. Okay, if they had to do everything by themselves, they wouldn't create anything. Okay, so what they do is that they they give jobs, boring jobs that they don't like to to do it, and they focus on the ideas. Okay. And they, they, they have employees and everyone any, is... You have yeah. heard so, about so, any interesting so, so, ideas appearing during the last 20 years? What? Any interesting ideas appearing into the world in the last 20 years? Yeah, you have like, you have the technological advances like proves to you the ideas that are being, em that, that are emerging like now. So you can, you can, only you ideas can. regarding technological advancement are appearing. No, I don't Technology know. helps us to produce better know. technology I don't, I don't, I and don't come up with ideas about it. I'm, I'm sure there are things in art that have like b been created. And You're I'm sure? Yeah. You just haven't noticed them. Uh, sometimes I paint in, in my <laughs> <laughs> But what I'm saying that um, like it is, it is like logical that when you give the boring stuff to machines, it will have more room for your head to, to think about new things and to advance in another ways. Well, I, I heard that there is a growing number of uh, uh, young people, uh, I, I read somewhere, it doesn't matter where, uh, which spend more and more percent, it was about some years ago, uh, more and more time is spent in virtual reality. Uh, you can, uh, you know, not only computer games, you can uh, yeah. live there. Yeah. So, uh, one of the possible scenarios is when you are freed from all the menial and all the uh, hard work and it's done by robots and by computers etc then you will be able fi finally to enjoy the virtual reality to its full now what's the point of such existence but m maybe it would be uh, uh, easier to enjoy nature for example like i would like th that someone th take my job and do it at myself um, b at my place and i would go like do hiking and stuff like that <laughs> why not <laughs> I think that assumes that there, we will run out of problems at some point, and I think that's garbage. Like, th th just think of the rich people, you, the people you know who are richer than you. Are their problems any less relevant to them just because they happen to have more resources and technology at hand? I think not. And so the idea that progress will erase our problems and we'll have to, the, our last problem will be what the heck are we going to do in utopia, I think is just silly. Like, there will be all kinds of problems. Like, I, there's a huge discussion about mental health, which is frustrating in various ways, but I think that, you know, looking after people and caring, cognitive care, are huge vistas that we know nothing about. We don't even know how our own brains work. Like, the idea that we're anywhere near the end of, what, well, the end of history, to quote Fukushima, like, it's just not. I, I don't think it's true. Well, um, let me reformulate the angle. Where do you see a danger and problematic of, uh, of a growing technological advancement? Where do you locate? Pro why it's problematic at all? Why it uh, has to be discussed or could be discussed? Because through technology comes control. And uh, society makes progress and new ideas are formed often at the edges 
of what we deem to be acceptable. A hundred years ago, women couldn't vote, being gay was illegal, and any other number of things which we now take as sort of standard and acceptable were completely wrong. And if you got caught doing them, you would be put in prison. And I think that one of the problems with the sort of increasing penetration of various technologies, but particularly sensors near our bodies and computation that's powerful, so phones, watches, etc., cameras, the problem with that is that it makes it harder to break the rules because the rules are encoded into the environment much closer to where you're doing your activities. And I don't really know what the answer to this problem is. I think it's actually something as boring as data protection. I think we need to have strong rules about who can do what with what data because you can't put cameras and computers back in the box. Hanan, uh, where do you see a problem with the technological advancement? If there is any, maybe uh, for you it's unproblematic, but maybe you do see some. Mm, in, in some types of, of technology, like I feel like people are becoming more individualist, maybe. Maybe this is the, most, the problem that I find the most... I mean, we are, for example, with social media and stuff like that, we are becoming more individualist, we are loners, okay? And the human-human interaction is becoming less and less. And so I think what we can do is to fix that and to like um, foresee that and to do things in order to, to reinforce a human-human interaction but alongside with the technological advancement. So I don't think we should uh, stop technology so that we, we would interact more with each other, but I think we should see how we can work together like humans and machines in order to advance together. And what about you, Jonathan? Where do you see a problematic side? Um, well, throughout history, we've, um, we've not known what to do uh, morally and ethically. We've not really known what to do with the stuff that we've created. Winston Churchill once said something like, people, will, people usually do the right thing once they've tried everything else. Um, and um, we're, we're a bit like kids in a candy store. We're, we're just smart enough to build a world that we're a bit too dumb to live in. So a lot of the stuff that we create, we misuse, we, we abuse it, and we abuse each other with it. Then eventually we figure out that's a bad thing. Um, now with every technology that makes us collectively and individually more powerful, the possibility for doing damage before we realize what we're doing gets greater and greater. At the same time, it makes us more lazy, more entitled, more demanding, more impatient, more judgmental. And collectively, that's disastrous. Just add one, one more specific one, which is I think the erosion of a human attention span is a real problem. Um, I think the ability to do deep work, to spend time focusing on one thing, is very, very hard in the modern, especially if you have a knowledge working job that requires you to answer a lot of emails and go to a lot of meetings. Like, what's the longest time that any of us have to sit and think in our jobs during a day? 25 minutes? I, I, I think that's terrible, and I think that lends itself towards a society that doesn't actually make progress because humans don't have time. Or they do have time, they just... We arrange our day. A progress is measured in how many emails you respond to and how many meetings you take. And I, that's trash. Like, I think it, it should be measured in how much time you spend thinking about the things that interest you. But we don't currently arrange our workplaces or our, our worlds in that way. And that's largely to do with email. Now what's the problem? People uh, have been... Uh, what's the problem of not thinking? Well, uh, less and less thinking, more and more efficient uh, enjoyment and... Uh, and then technological advancements, what's the problem? Because I think Why we, thinking is needed? Because I think what humans for? define themselves as thinking things. I think that's what we like about ourselves. That's why we're different from starfish. And starfish think a little bit, but only a tiny little bit. A bit that is so irrelevant compared to us that we, you know, we wouldn't want to be starfish. But and perhaps so, it's much more comfortable and enjoyable life to, oh, uh, think to live like a starfish. Yeah, quite possibly. Maybe, maybe that's why. And technology can help us to become more like starfish uh, efficiently. Yeah, I mean, if you take one thing away from this panel, become a starfish. Um, yeah, that's a... Uh, and make technology <laughs> make to technology help us to become more like starfish. starfish. Yeah, make tech do the non-starfish yet. No, but seriously, I think that this, the dichotomy that is coming out of the panel between instinctual human behavior and sort of brain, brain, Tolstoy called it brain spinning, and he actually called it a negative thing. He would say that people who write books that are brain spun means they're trying to like, they're trying to be too clever, and it doesn't emerge kind of naturally out of their human experiences. And of course, he would have said that his work did emerge naturally. It was only, you know, 1,200 pages of it, but anyway. Um, and 
I, I'm, I'm on the fence as to which one of these I prefer. I see, I see the advantages of becoming more animalistic and instinctual and allowing the, heart, the, sort of, the, the sort of hippocampal functions of our existence to be outsourced to machines. But at the same time, that's quite worrying because then, you know, what if one smart human decides not to do that and remains in control of the machines and then we're all screwed? Uh, that, that depends on who the human will be, of course. Maybe it will be Hanan and everybody will benefit. Uh, do you see any problem with uh, less and less uh, time uh, to think? Uh, I, don't, I don't see a problem in that. I would love to, like, my dream is to have uh, everything that Not can... Not to think at all is yeah, your no. dream. To think when I want to, okay? To, ha to have full power of when I wake up, when I sleep, when I think, when I don't, when I create, and when I swim, and when I go to sports, like to be, to be and not be like controlled by the by what I should do and like what I should prepare and what I like. You know, it's very overwhelming each time we have to wake up to go to our jobs, and we are always running, and we are always like stressed, and we want more success, and when we have success, we want more and more and more until so, like there's always we we want infinity of of things, you know. So I think um, why not like let technology do the 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 boring stuff for us and like enjoy life and be in control of ourselves and of our freedom. I I would like that like personally. <laughs> I'm not convinced that works because I think humans are social animals and the thing we really enjoy is not just like wandering around in parks and having sex and eating food. I think we enjoy meeting social goals and, and work. What is work other than a, a social goal met? And so to say that let's let the machines do all the work I think is to completely ignore what makes me happy at least, which is when I file a piece to someone and they say, that's really good, Hal, nice work. Like, I, you know, maybe I'm a workaholic, but... I'm, I'm totally willing to accept that as a likelihood. I was just writing emails before I came on here, but I, 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 don't, I personally don't want to live in this utopic world where we just wander around talking to deer. Yeah, I, I agree with you, but um, maybe, maybe not like um, delete the work, just like slowing, slowing down, you know? Maybe, I don't know, the speed is, is sometimes is really overwhelming. To, to my point of view, so that's that's what I'm talking about, and of course, like we can reinforce social human-human -human interaction in in many ways, in an enjoyable way, not just for work and, and stuff. So. Uh, Jonathan, I, I'm sure you have something to say regarding this discussion. This uh, two uh, two positions. Where do you position yourself? Um, both pessimistic and optimistic at the same time. The more time we have on our hands, and the more of our mechanical needs are outsourced to machines. Um, there's no guarantee that we're suddenly going to evolve into these, you know, super moral advanced life forms. We're probably going to watch porn and cat videos. Um, and uh, that, that's what humans do. We're fundamentally lazy. And, and it all goes back to this vicious circle of the more our instincts are met, the more we're, in, we're encouraged to be selfish and individualistic and judgmental and impatient, um, the more we do that until we hit a crisis point where we realize we have to change. And for most individuals, change is terrifying and annoying. Um, so we'll keep pushing the limits of what we're allowed to do before we destroy ourselves. Until we destroy ourselves. <laughs> uh, I, I want to uh, include one of the audience members into this uh, discussion uh, with, uh, um, with a question. I, um, I want Hans uh, Luik to ask a question to these uh, noble panelists uh, of your concern, with something that uh, bothers you. Yes, thank you very much, Arnis, for the surprising uh, chance, but I will take the chance, of course. Uh, dear panelists, um, I'm representing uh, one of the uh, biggest uh, IT development teams in the Baltics, which is the Delphi, the Delphi search engine, of course, and the video engines and every other engine. How do you feel about the best brains in IT and the best brains in technology generally? Uh, just tasking with the quite silly idea of having you taking a look at some stupid advertising. Is this a waste of inter intellect or smartness, or however you call it? Thank you. Sorry, is what a waste of intellect? Advertising? Yes. The brains dedicated on this task of you looking at my Delphi ads. 
well, this, this, the, the, the phrase is like, the, what a shame that the, the world's greatest minds are wasted getting you to click on cat videos or whatever. Um, I, I think that the advertising industry, actually, the online advertising industry has a lot, for, a lot to answer for. Like when, when you said about how you, don't want your, you want to make your own choices about what you do, the online advertising industry is, built, is predicated on the idea that it will make choices about what you do when you're online. And it does this through various very clever, very manipulative ways. Um, but I think we need advertising. We need to, a, um, a, a route to tell people about new products that isn't the press, because we're fickle and mostly stupid. And so we need some kind of more open market whereby people can get ideas out. I think the problem is that online advertising has is exploiting all of the worst bits of humans that you just described, that we love things that are extreme, we, 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 we love not paying really close attention to things and just diving down rabbit holes and all of a sudden, you know, we're 10 Alex Jones videos deep on YouTube. And I think that curbing our worst instincts in the advertising industry would be a really good thing, but I don't want it to go away. I think it's fundamentally important. It'll never go away. Humans, everyone's selling something. An old boss of mine in the advertising industry once said even a priest is selling God. Everyone fundamentally is selling something to others. It's a, it's a transactional thing. Um, until humans are this pristine, perfect, sort of uh, unified energy state, there are always going to be transactions working themselves out because humanity is a puzzle working itself out. And advertising is a, is a fundamental part of that. Unless we go back to the Soviet Union or North Korea. And let's be honest, there's plenty of advertising in North Korea as well. It's all for one product, the leader. Um, and... Uh, what I hope these fine minds will do is use their, their abilities not to sell crap to each other, but to help us to... It's always shaped our behavior, and these algorithms do it more and more and more. They shape our behavior. So hopefully we'll have the self-awareness collectively to choose to use technology to shape our behavior into more positive and constructive directions. I agree with the others. I don't have. Well, but then, uh, what would you see as the best use of your bra of our brain? Of the, the smartest scientists come together to help. No, smartest computer engineers help uh, Hans and Delphi to uh, draw our attention and uh, um, spend time on uh, useless uh, bits of information. And uh, generate some. What? What do they generate? What do they generate? Clicks, clicks and clicks generate money. Uh, so the best minds spend uh, uh, their um, uh, effort and time to generate money. Uh, what would be the best use of your brain? Uh, Just to generate money for yourself or for somebody else, or what? No, maybe we can like. Use technology, like use my brain to the advanced technology, so that technology would help us understand ourselves more. Could you, you know? give an example? Um, How it could for work. example, I work I work in a domain called social robotics, for example. Okay, so social robotics it permits that we quantify the social res responses of people uh, to the social actions. Uh, by a robot, because when you have a human-human -human interaction, it is hard to quantify the actions and reactions. And so, what social robotics is permitting us is to, uh, like, monitor what a specific action from, like, what a specific gaze that you are giving me now, what what kind of a reaction uh, it it uh, it it um, indulges in, in me. Okay. So, uh, yeah, f for me, the 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 best use of our brains. And our technology is to understand uh, our ourselves, like on a social level, on a, an emotional level, on a productive level. And he said something very important: we don't understand ourselves in a biological way uh, now because we are spending so much money on, on technology. We are spending less money on on like understanding how the brain works, how the how our like hormones work, how our system work. And so I think like uh, in the long term. When the technology take, takes on the, the boring stuff, we can like, find time and money to, to concentrate on that. Well, you know there is a uh, worry about uh, kids more uh, less and less having emotional recognition skills. They, then less and less uh, growing, uh, b being born recently, they have less uh, ability to recognize uh, complex emotions than... Uh, well, 
yeah. according to psychological studies, yeah. various. Yeah. And you are teaching uh, robots, or you and uh, um, people like you are teaching robots to have emotional skills. Couldn't we reach a bright new future where we don't have a need any emotional recognition skills in humans because it will be all uh, given to robots. They will be able to read. Uh, so you will look at my face and you will not understand why uh, my, the content of my gaze. So you will ask your uh, fellow uh, robot, which you, who will carry, you will carry him in your pocket, you know, and ask him, what, what is he looking at me? Uh, what he means? I think that having robots among us will help us um, ev like evolve a new type of recognition because we will dealing, dealing, we'll be dealing with other species okay, that, has, that are not humans, that our brains is not used to them. And so our brain will create mechanisms to, to evolve towards understanding them. So I, I don't think, when you, when you speak about it, I have the feeling that you, are, you feel that robots are, will take over us, they will replace us. But you have to keep in mind that robots will work with us. They will like, we will be together to, to help us. It will assist us. So, yeah. Uh, can I answer that same sure. question that you just, sure. so, so this yes. hypothetical scenario, some yes. piece of technology, a robot yes. or a machine, is on me and it's assessing your emotions. And before I answer it, I want to bring us back to uh, storytelling before printed media, before um, painting, before 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 anything like that existed. And if you were a storyteller, you would have the ability within your own skin and skull and brain to tell vivid stories that would make you feel things and 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 see things and understand things about the world that you hadn't before. We don't. We, we're not sad that most humans can't. Do, although I think it actually is sad when you think about it. It's quite poignant. Most humans don't do that anymore. We write things down and we paint pictures, but we don't go around thinking, oh, the poor poet, he can no longer conjure up imagery with just his words and a fire. We think, oh yeah, the poet writes some poems on some paper and we read them and that's great. And uh, uh, what you're describing, this scenario where some external machine can assess your emotions and tell me about them, assuming that that's seamless, I mean, obviously if it's clunky and there was like, he, he looks a bit sad, then no one's going to enjoy that, that's not going to work. But if it's better than what I can do myself and just as seamless as my own brain's emotional recognition, I see no reason why that's any different from a painter with a paintbrush or a writer with a piece of paper. Uh, don't give away the microphone. Um, you, have, you have been overseeing the technology developments uh, throughout the world, as I understand, but maybe we can be <laughs> more specific. Uh, what is the best use of brain, of technological brain, at the moment. Technological well, brain or human yeah, brain? Of technological. Well, the technological advance, where, where the brain is used to t advance something. Where is oh. you see the most promising line? What is the best use of, of brain? As in, like, what, uh, what I would like brain power to yes. be focusing on? Yes. Um, I think it's hard to know. Um, I think, so, there's this book by a guy called Ramez Nam called The Infinite Resource. And what he's talking about is human minds. And it's very, so this, it's very anti-Malthusian. And what that means is that the idea that as the human population grows, problems grow. His view is that as the human population grows, the potential for solutions, which can only come out of human minds, grows. And so he says, we want the population to grow, but we want to make sure that those people are educated. So I think if it was me, I want brain power to be devoted to keeping people alive long enough all people, not just white people in rich countries, keeping people alive long enough to have good ideas that are beneficial to the rest of us, and also to g giving them the tools that they need, mental and real, to, to, it, to have those ideas and to enact them. So I guess I'm talking about infant, infant health and education. That's what I would have brains focusing on. Any examples where it is already taking place? Uh, I mean, I'm not much of a Gates fan, but it's undeniable that saving 250 million people from malaria is a pretty big deal. Who knows what ideas are locked up in the heads of someone who just didn't die of malaria in Ghana? Um, probably much more interesting things than are locked up in my head, and I want the world to benefit from that, or at least Ghana to benefit from it, or at least their city. You know, I... I, I think that it's, it's a crying shame that we look to places like Silicon Valley as the only places that interesting ideas and interesting innovations can come from when we have half a billion people who aren't even on the internet. And, you know, there's... there's Sorry, who says that Silicon Valley is only apart from themselves? The market so says it is. The market? 
and, and to what if, for whether that's wise or not, I don't know. But you know, if, you, if there, there was a presentation in the other room about VC funding in Europe and the graph sort of trickles up, but then if you set that graph against VC funding for the West Coast, it's the European one just vanishes. You can't even see it; it's tiny. Um, and so, so, where you spend your money is indicative of where you think good ideas are, unless you're unless you're very cynical and just think it's only about making a buck, which maybe it is. So you left ambigu ambiguity. Jonathan, uh, what would you think is the best use of technological brains? What kind of technological advantage? You, you said that they should help us to improve something, our awareness, etc. Any examples where you see uh, developing in that direction? Yeah. Yes. Um, everywhere. I mean, everywhere where we're doing good for the planet, we're using technology to do it. Um, now, there are some specific technologies, like brain training software, for example. Um, fundamentally, everything that helps us to do any kind of long-term planning or analysis is good, depending what we use those two tools for. The best use of the human brain is to improve the quality of relationships, particularly parenting, um, and to solve the structural social problems that technology can't solve for us. And that requires a lot of, a, a, a lot of the ability to analyze an awful lot of data uh, and come up with solutions. We need to also be able to communicate with each other so we can share our solutions. Um, everybody has got unique talents and skills and abilities that the rest of the world needs. Maybe just their close companions need it. Maybe the whole world needs it. Uh, everyone has some, something to offer, and technology can help draw out, help us to identify, draw out uh, what we can offer, and share what we can offer. What technology helps to do it? <laughs> All kinds of communication technology. Without the microphone, the audience wouldn't be able to hear what we were saying. We would have to be speaking in small groups of five or six people. Maybe they were. That's their choice. <laughs> uh, my, uh, my worry in this very general talk we have is that uh, we, we don't uh, catch the core of, of the problem with which we started. And I don't know how to catch it, uh, because it's, it's sort of disappearing as we approach it. Um, well, let me reformulate the problem in the following way. Uh, in a guiding or leading the, uh, ideology in Silicon Valley, one of the ideologies, uh, is basically uh, aiming, at, well, we're aiming at the singularity moment, and we are aiming to be immortal. You know, Kurzweil wants to uh, become, uh, to make his mind immortal, which is, uh, well, he, sh he joins a thousand years old uh, search for immortality just in this shape. He wants to be immortal in this shape. Uh, well, if we add to it uh, certain uh, motivations like, like money, uh, what other motivational, and then uh, making life easier to, to, uh, and to uh, make us more like starfish. That's an, another yet uh, another motivation. What is the driving force? Like, not what it would be in a utopian and real, uh, an imagined world, but really, what is the driving force for this huge and in, in incredibly fast technological advancement at this moment? Well, we are living at the moment where changes take place weekly, technological advancement. What is the driving force? What is the driving force of this madness? Like, really? Um, I will answer the question directly without asking whether it's the right question, because I'm not sure that we are necessarily progressing. Like, ex everyone always begins their technology nonfiction with the, pa the pace of progress is so much faster today than it ever has, and I'm not certain that's true, but, uh, if it's true, the reason it's true is because the world is so connected. Information moves faster than it used to. And that's been going on, it's not just the internet, that's been going on since cable news. It's interesting if you look at the divergence of the houses the, of, of the Republican and Democrats in the US, uh, they start to move apart as cable news is invented. And I think that's because when it's easier to propagate messages, you have to start to have a war of attrition over what, how extreme your messages are and that only the most extreme messages get through. And that driven by cable news, that means that sort of the, the opinions and the views of voters start to drift apart. Um, so I think that's what's driving the, the feeling that we are in this sort of exponential, exponential growth phase. Well, but that's feeling, so it's a perception, a perceptual thing. But 
but there is a technological advance. We, uh, it's obvious that well, we have some mm. uh, technological capacities which we didn't have 10 years ago, mm. and they are obvious. Mm. Uh, uh, but what is the driving force behind it? Curiosity, immortality, uh, uh, bu business instinct, what, what is it? Greed? What, what is driving force? I think that uh, we all uh, want one thing, is to be happy. And we we optimize we, we tend to optimize our happiness and I think what human beings are doing through technology is that they are trying to optimize their comfort and thus their happiness. So I think like even even curiosity like uh, some people are curious because they are they are happy because they are curious you know so I think that we, even without knowing th this like unconsciously we we are searching all for happiness and that's why everything is is going in, in, in a way because that's how we define happiness would be like uh, people think some people uh, think that having more money will make them happy uh, some people think that working and being beneficial for 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 the humanity is um, they ma it makes them happy uh, some people think if they are immortal then they, c they would be happy so maybe it's happiness so it's a battle of various conceptions of happiness various visions of happiness mm -hmm. that's how you see I it think. I, I think if you zoom out and particularly back in time a little bit, it helps to answer this question. I think, I think what's driving technological progress is the fact that entities, not even humans, want to want continuance. They want to survive. And Which so... Entity, sorry. And, and, I mean, I'm not even sure this just stops at uh, living organisms. I, th I think all entities want to survive. The well, the mushrooms, the mush mushrooms will take over the, the planet exactly. easily when, uh, exactly. when we are gone. But even think about this. Think about the solar system. It has a certain equilibrium, and it doesn't want to be. It doesn't. It's happy at that minima. And if an astronaut, this is your mystical position. This is my mystical. This is my mystical position. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is my mystical position. I mean, we've got blue lights. I feel like that's a, that's a cue for my mystical position, right? But so I think one of the original human technologies was language. And I think when we, when whoever came up with that amazing, incredible idea, it can that idea conferred such competitive advantage over the group of pre-humans that started having something that you could call language, or maybe it was even animals before them, that that it took off. And it's clearly a very powerful technology. And I think what it comes down to is the the current the dividing line between technology and nature, or technology and humans, we like to keep it quite clear. We like to think that nature and tech are separate, but they're really not. Humans are not separate from nature. We're not some aberration on the planet. We're an animal competing and doing, as far as we can tell, doing quite well at it. And I think you can't divorce technology from that competition just because it's not genetic evolution. It's mimetic evolution, new ideas, new, new ideas becoming new products. And those things are powerful. And I, I think that you know, any idea has a kind of persistence in the world, and good ones survive and prosper. So, uh, and as a, as a background of it all is an entity that wants to survive. Uh, it's not God, if that's where you're going. No, 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 I'm not going in that direction. It sounds as a, some form of life force, that life itself, or what all entities want to survive. Fine. Uh, Jonathan, uh, what, to your mind, is the real driving force behind this... Uh, we have uh, two versions. Uh, various conceptions of happiness, they drive uh, these technological changes, and then there is an uh, entity's wish to survive. And without a uh, strong distinction between what nature does and what technology does, there's a continuum, according to your understanding. What, what is the driving force? Could you? Well, I, I don't think that those two answers contradict each other at all. I think they're, they're both true in parallel. Um, there's always been a sense of forward movement, a desire for yearning for progress uh, in all life forms, and as Hal said, maybe beyond life. Um, we've, it's, this, it's exactly the same drive that made our ancestors wonder what was on the other side of the rivers and oceans and what was up the mountains, so it's what the curiosity. stars were. Well, According not to just you, it's curiosity. curiosity dri driven also by a desire to control and, to, to, and comfort seeking. There's something else as well, though, that, which is that we fall into loops of behavior. Habits are automatically addictive. Uh, and when we start to see something that seems to work for us, we want more of it. Uh, and technology gives us more of it, mainly because we live in a monetary world. I was asked by a philosopher once, uh, what, would, what, would, be, what would, be, would it be better to live in? If an alien came to Earth and said, I'm going back to my planet, and we're either going to live in a world governed by money or a world governed by creativity with no money in that world, which one should we do? 
Uh, and if, uh, most people in the group said, um, money, you should go for a world dominated by money. And I said, no, 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 it should be dominated by creativity. And this very well-educated businessman, he said, but how will you be able to buy medicine in a world without money? This is the most ridiculous like, loop of thinking imaginable. Now, this guy's a well-educated businessman. He's not a three-year-old. Um, and he got stuck in this thing. How will you be able to buy medicine if there's a world with no money? My view, of course, is a world governed by creativity. We'll have plenty of medicine and we won't need money to buy it with. Um, but people get stuck into these loops of thinking. Um, so it's, that's, that's it's so lovely to sit in the company of utopians. It's, 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 it gives a special pleasure, you know, to be next to... I'm a pessimistic know. utopian. Yeah, well, but uh, uh, utopian uh, anyway. Uh, anyway. Uh, I wanted to ask Hanan uh, about artificial intelligence, one thing. And it's related to your, uh, to your uh, uh, notion of continuum between uh, technology and nature. Uh, my uh, understanding of intelligence, which I didn't answer, is that it is human intelligence is artificial. Uh, for it to uh, flourish, it has to be, you have to l know how to work on it, how to develop it, how to become smarter, if you wish. There, is a, there are techniques developed thousands of years, how to become more attentive, more concentrated, remember more, uh, have more creative mind, etc. There could be technologies, and all of them are artificial. They are artificially developing human mind. Then, that's my, uh, my picture. When artificial intelligence is understood, when uh, that it's something humans create, then what is forgotten is that our intelligence itself is artificial, and we are forgetting the skills for it to uh, grow, for it to uh, be made. Our own intelligence is, uh, when, when we are creating artificial intelligence, we, when we have inter externalized it. Uh, do you see any sense in uh, what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm trying to. Um, I don't, I don't see the connection between like doing exercises in order to increase your like your your attention and your intelligence. I don't see that connection with artif with creating artificial in intelligent. Well, it's, it's, it works uh, on the distinction between natural and artificial. Okay. And and human intelligence is already on the side of artificial, and not on the. It doesn't grow like mushrooms grow. It has to be. You have to work on it artificially. Mm -hmm. for, so. There is a continuum of artificiality. They, all intelligence is artificial, not only uh, something you build. Uh, I, I think, I think pa part of our uh, intelligence is artificial. You know, um, how do we develop our intelligence, okay? Uh, we are born in an environment which is different from one person to another. And according to what we face in our lives, our brains, our brains like learn from our environment and they try to adapt it. And so we, when we, each time we grow up and each experience that we have with our environment, it, it determines how our brains uh, change, okay? And for me, that, that is how we are developing our uh, cognitive capacity because we are interacting all the time with our environment. Now, what you are calling artificial, uh, adding some artificial intelligence to our brains, like training our brains to, to, to more, it is like we are, we are putting our brains in the, in, the, um, in the laboratory, like virtual laboratory, where you subject it to a, another environment and or you subject it to new habits, like you tell it you should uh, do this and this and this repetitively until you acquire something, something that will help you in your real environment. This is what you are talking about. So, so what, what, for in me... In that area, yeah. Huh? Yes, yes, in that yeah, area. Yeah, so for me, it, it, not all of our intelligence is uh, artificial. Some of it. Agreed. Okay. And when we create intelligent machines, okay, um, it's okay. Why? Because, uh, like, we, ha we are interacting with intelligent uh, human beings all the time, you know? So why, why, why is it that interacting with something new would be a problematic for our intelligence. I don't, I, don't, I don't see that. I see that our brains will always evolve in a way that will make us survive and be happier. Like, I agree with you about the survival 
thing. You see what I mean? I don't think that having a new, uh, like, artificially intelligent creature in our environment will, like, will, will limit our capacity of evolving and, and, uh, in a certain way. That's my vision of it. Any comment, Paul? Well, I just want to explore this mushroom idea, right? So the, the idea that mushrooms are a natural intelligence and that, that humans and well, At AI, least natural life force with certain Well, but to say a mushroom is an intelligence is just ignorant. Like, I'd like to see you grow on a big pile of manure right, and, 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 and absorb nutrients and survive as an organism. It's an incredibly intelligent thing to do. You, sure. Humans can't do it. No, I agree with you entirely. That's intelligence. Sure. That's natural. But, but so why is that natural and our brains are artificial? No, no, I, I, uh, I didn't say that all intelligence, mm. all human intelligence is uh, artificial. I didn't mean that I'm, and I didn't say I, that. I mean, the word artificial is, is difficult, right? Because does it mean, does it, I think the clearest definition is a thing humans made with the modern economy. Like that, that's the, anything other than that gets hopelessly caught up, you know. Is language artificial? Like, I'm, I don't know, did we make it? it? It's very hard. You know, the words, ultimately, you have to choose what they mean. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. I think, I, 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 think I, I agree with your point about being worried about new things. I think we tend to spend a lot of time thinking about new things and paying attention to them, and then eventually they're not new anymore, and we don't worry about them so much. And I suspect this will happen with machine learning and AI just like it will with anything else, because at the end of the day, it's not that clever. Would you like to carry a small uh, uh, I, uh, AI robot? What, like the emotional recognition robot we were talking Not about? Not only. He will know everything. He will know all languages. Mm. Well, we already it, we are approaching it, you know. He um, will know all languages. He will understand complex situations. He will geolocate you in... in, in, in and tell very, you very, clo very close to the, yes, the, yes, my I friend mean, in my I, pocket I, here. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 just to, with more skills, mm. with more abilities. My phone, but better? Say that, yes, your phone, <laughs> but better, but also have a, having a personality, you know. Oh. You will have to approach... Uh, you I think it depends on its personality. What if I don't like it? Then you will be able to change it. Buy oh, another. I, until I find one that I like. Yes. Well, then, uh, yes, I don't see the problem. And uh, would you agree to have a, uh, him or her as a sexual partner as well? You don't, you don't need human interaction, you know. These, these Again, intelligent it depends machines on if can I do like everything. Again, it depends on if I like them. <laughs> but but I th but I think your point is, I think as we, in order to keep ourselves sane as we adapt to new things, and maybe there are more new things now than there were in the past, whatever. I do think the idea of like leaving your hyper intelligent sex partner slash dictionary at home once in a while and going to an Airbnb in the Airbnb in the woods just on your own and like looking at leaves. Um, is probably a good idea. I, I I'm not sure why, but I suspect that is a good idea. I like your idea of sexual partner. Uh, that was your slash, idea. Slash dictionary. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's what I look for in a partner. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, uh, any any uh, developments on this uh, front for you? <laughs> yeah, I'd probably cheat on my artificial intelligence um, dictionary. Having another one in the <laughs> yeah, kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's the question? No question. Uh, let's survive and be happy. Basically, that is a conclusion, not a question. I conclude from our uh, guests uh, that uh, what is a driving force is uh, various conceptions of happiness. Uh, so there is no cause for fear of technological advancements. We should be open and exploratory, no? That's one conclusion. Uh, and uh, um, whatever are the driving forces for specific technologies, various conceptions of happiness, and the uh, life force wanting to sustain itself. Uh, I don't know what, what did you contribute to this uh, complex, uh, <laughs> complex vision. <laughs> uh, but uh, the conclusion is we should uh, live and be happy, basically.